What's going on, guys? This is the Founder Hour podcast. We're your co-host, Pat and Posh. And uh, the reason why you don't hear Posh right now is because we're sharing a microphone, for the record. Uh, that's because we have two amazing guests on the show today. Shelby and Sandy. What's up, guys? Hey. hey. Great to have you on. Thank you for, Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us at your humble abode. Mm-hmm. And we're here with Spooky, too, who's... Yep. Sandy's dog. Sandy's dog. Yeah. He's a little toy poodle. What a guy. And he started out black, but then he turned gray. And he'll be full gray in two years. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. He's kind of more He's literally dog. licking me right Sandy's now. He's girlfriend. Yeah. Keep him warm. Awesome. Well, um, just want to preface this conversation with kind of how we even heard about you guys. Um, we were, we, so Dee Murphy was our first guest on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And uh, shout out Dee. And Dee, we walked into his office and the first thing we saw was one of your pieces. Mm-hmm. It was a Simpsons piece. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I uh, hadn't seen anything like it before. So I was like, Dee, what the fuck is this? And he's like, Shelby and Sandy. So that's... Uh, that's kind of how we heard about. Do you, have, do you have anything else to add? No. No. Um, <laughs> that's kind of how we heard about you guys. Been following your journey ever since. You know, it's crazy to see how far you guys have come in the last couple of years. So excited to dive in and learn more about your background and up until now and what you guys are doing. So let's do it. Why don't we kind of? I'll kick also it off? say I like I like D a lot. D's a great guy. I met D uh, at USC where we both went to college. And you guys went to college together? Like he, the same time? I think he was a year older than me. Oh wow. And then, uh, and then we, our friendship actually, I mean, we reconnected, I guess, at, uh, he started the clothing company Young and Reckless with That's Trauma. Right. Yep. And I was working at the Fantasy Factory. No way. When they started that. Oh, that makes mm-hmm. sense. Wow. Fantasy all, Factory. That was a while ago. <laughs> yeah. It all connects and yeah. realigns. So you guys, I know you guys grew up in LA. You guys are brothers. Actually okay. grew up in Orange County. Oh, Orange yeah. County. Yeah. Southern California. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. That's, that's like okay. the, the no-no, right? We're close. Like LA, Orange County. We always liked LA. Yeah. Yeah. We love Orange County. Amazing. So tell us, tell us about childhood in Orange County. What was it like? We had a very fun childhood. <laughs> yeah. Like Shelby and I, you know, we were building, we were painting, we were exploring, we did everything. Mm-hmm. So we have... Uh, there's four of us, four Murphy boys. Yep. Uh, Sandy. And sorry to cut you off, but let's for the for the ones who are listening. Yeah. Right now, Shelby. Shelby, Shelby speaking. Say yeah. something, Shelby. Hey. Shelby okay. Speaking. That's Shelby, and then yeah, Sandy. This is Sandy. Is this guy? All right. <laughs> hey. So going back to your brothers. So there's four of us. I'm the oldest. Uh, then Corey uh, is two and a half years younger than me. Then mm-hmm. Sandy, mm-hmm. eight years younger than me. And then Jody who's 12 years younger than me. And we, uh, have always been best friends. So growing up in our house, a very loving parents, a very warm home, lots of art everywhere. Um, uh, my mom's, uh, was an interior designer because she still is, but not professionally. And she also went to art school. Yeah. USC um, too. So family of Trojans? Yeah, Exactly. And Dad, uh, too? Uh-huh. Dad is a Trojan. That's where they met. Oh, wow. He was, I think, pre-med to be a dentist and then yeah. joined a fraternity <laughs> and then did not do pre-med anymore. I mean, he, I'm not surprised. He, he did political science. Yeah, same here, yeah. Yeah, I did, too. Oh, nice. There I did poli-sci and cinema, cinema and television. Oh, I didn't yeah. do that part. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> I thought maybe entertainment lawyer. But there you go, yeah. Yeah. Didn't work out? No. Once I graduated school, it was, I was very eager to start a career. Right. Did you guys both know growing up that you would kind of take that path of not only going to USC, but also, you know, being more in touch with your creative side and following that track as opposed to having a more professional, uh, you know, dentist, doctor, engineer, lawyer type career? We always thought, but we would do something creative. I think Sandy way more than me. Yeah. Knew. I always knew I wanted to do something creative. What, how'd you know that? I don't know. I always was just drawing growing up every day. Like, always bringing like a, a sketch pad everywhere if we went on vacation in a car ride. Always like had a pad of paper, pencil, crayons. I always knew I wanted to draw. But then, you know, as I kept going, I got interested in like painting or like digital drawing, animation. But, yeah, all along, I knew. And, like, Shelby, you were always creative, though, too. Always very creative. Uh, I always, like, I was the one who built all the skateboard ramps (laughs) for the neighborhood kids. Mm -hmm. Um, I loved skateboarding. And uh, we always did art art projects, always. And every birthday and holiday was always, those were always the gifts. 
you know, uh, chalk and watercolor and I mean, everything you can imagine. And so yeah. we did a lot of that. You know, it's funny, like, I'm sure Pat's kind of having the same thought. We've had a few people now at this point after like 100 plus episodes, 115 plus episodes where they had a passion for skateboarding, you know? Mm. Um, and I don't know, I don't know how that translates eventually to becoming a creative founder of something. Um, but was it, when you were growing up, was there a big community of folks that were into skateboarding and then eventually have now kind of gone on to still be in touch with that, that, that creative side of theirs? Cause I mean, we've had like what Rob, we've had, um, P rod, we've had a few others, I think that were recently talking about skateboarding as well, but was there like a community out there that, you know, was so strong that kind of stuck together and was almost flexing that creative muscle? Um, maybe. <laughs> maybe. It's got to be because of Southern California. Is Southern California. Yeah. Like, and it and was if, popular. I mean, the, I, I mean, I thought it was really cool. I really liked doing it. Yeah. Naturally. I was pretty good at it naturally. And uh, my group of friends were pretty good also. Mm -hmm. And so we... We like doing it together. And many of them are creative. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's a skateboarder makes a creative person because a lot of them are sit behind a desk also. Right, and, right. You know? I think, yeah, like I think if uh, you grew up in LA in like the 90s, you kind of sure. had to have been into skateboarding. But kind of everybody point. in the 90s. That was like I feel like skateboarding like, was, like, yeah. was just an American and Eric thing. Austin and, and even if you weren't born in Southern California, like I'm sure a lot of the people you interview now live in southern california yeah. and so it's just like that's right yeah rob was grew up in ohio right yeah like dramas from uh, sure right. but yeah. i think it was just an american thing like skateboarding mm -hmm. in the 90s and then at this age now when you interview them it's like it's all everyone's yeah, part of everyone's childhood. childhood yeah um yeah so so you mentioned like you had a lot of art in your house like gr growing up like were your parents creative too at all like did they mom was um besides she, besides like she's an artist okay, and then so my dad's an, an admirer yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, a lot, a mo like all the art in our house was ours growing up. Sure. It was like your mom's art. No. Well, she's there yeah, is some, some of her of, art. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. A lot of all, like our art. Your or, your your things own family we did art, in yeah. school and stuff like that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or projects that we did at home. Yeah. My mom did one really cool one. Uh, I also did this with my niece and nephew uh, a few years ago. But she oh, yeah. would she took uh, got a huge canvas uh, and had all of us brothers, um, she put out all the paints with brushes in each thing, and she put the big canvas up in the garage, and she said, just go nuts on it. Mm -hmm. And so we just splatted paint and, you know, did designs on it and covered layer over layer over layer, and that's the centerpiece of my family's home. And it's, mm -hmm. it's an awesome painting. Yeah. I did this recently with my niece and nephew because I remember doing that as a child, but, and I did it with just black and white, mm -hmm. and it's the centerpiece in my home. It's really cool. Nice and abstract. I know, Sandy, you mentioned that early on you knew that this would be something that you would always do, you know, be in art or, you know, be, you know, really kind of working with your talent. You know, was there any other motivation beyond that, even though, you know, as you continued going to school and, you know, getting an education, were, were you dead set? Like, this is what I'm going to do, regardless of what happens, regardless of, you know, whether I make money doing this or not. Like, was it something that you were so sure you were going to do that it really didn't matter what the outcome would be? Uh, I could weigh in on this. I thing. think I just yeah, practiced it. it so much. And it's like, you know, like it's, you want to do something that you're good at or that you enjoy. And so I just always enjoyed it, and then I got better and better, and I just stuck with it. What were you going to say? That's true. So Sandy, uh, all, he was always the best, you know, like really just naturally he can look at anything and then draw it perfectly. So he was always able to do that, and he could come up with his own characters and super uh, different thinking. Like his, you know, what he, his designs and creations were always amazing. So as a little boy, he did it just for pure enjoyment. And do you remember this as a kid? Like you hundred percent. And I'm get I'm gonna get to that. <laughs> like he would he would do he would fill these notebooks full of drawings and doodles and computer paper full of drawings and stuff. And I was older, so I had already gone through college and now was in the working world. And every time I'd come home, which I, I you know went home to my parents' house all the time, mm -hmm. but every time I'd come home 
Sandy would bring out all his new drawings for me and be like, okay, check out this one and look what I did here. And I would be like, dude, this is unbelievable. It's everything he did was so awesome. And I knew Sandy is, Sandy has a gift. It's better than, he's naturally the best. And then he practiced all the time and loved it. So he did that before he even thought about a career. You know, career probably wasn't even in his matter. mind yet. Yeah. Yeah. All he was thinking was, I just love doing this. College is approaching. I want to go to college for art, mm-hmm. right? That's what makes the most sense. So while Sandy, he got into USC, that was the first time that we then lived in the same city together. You know, it had been now, eight what, years. What were you doing at the time? I was at the Fantasy Factory. Rob Dudek's Fantasy Factory, that TV show on MTV. Mm-hmm. And... How did, how did you get involved with that? Because I, I know you said you were a poli-sci major. Like, did you want to go to law school? Like, was there other plans? So, yeah, I did poli-sci and cinema and television, and I thought that I was going to um, be like an entertainment lawyer. So all, I did a lot of internships. I was very proactive in this. I did a lot of internships at, like, mm-hmm. Paramount, uh, uh, Columbia Pictures. I had a summer, summer internship at uh, Sony Television. So you were, like, really dead set on This is what route. I was going to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. I worked for Entertainment Tonight for a while. Um, and this was all while I was in school. At USC. I, at USC. So when I graduated, uh, I knew that the best job I could get to really get in the industry was work at a talent agency. So I got a job at ICM. Um, I was an assistant to an agent. And I, I saw a lot of deals being made. And I saw how, I began to see how things, that's what happens when you, you know, you get a job and you see how things work. You get to see the inside of it. Right. So while I was there uh, on our, our team, um, uh, Rob was one of the clients, and that show, his show, he had just finished Robin Big, and it just started Fantasy Factory, and it was, he was the biggest. It was the most popular show on MTV. It was huge. Mm-hmm. Everybody watched mm-hmm. it. And uh, one of the guys that worked in my department said, hey, um, Rob's looking for somebody to manage the Fantasy Factory, and his... Uh, who will also be helping his uh, business, ma- business manager. Mm-hmm. And I said, I want that job. you got to get me that job. So and I got... you're like 23 years old, 24 years old? Yeah, 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 exactly. Like 24, I think, because I had been out of school for like three oh, years. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, I had, a, I, had a phone, I had a phone call interview with Jeremy Larner, who was Rob's um, business partner and manager, mm-hmm. and I got the job just like that. And so I started a month later, and it was awesome. It was the best job I ever had because after that, I started my career, which is this. Which is this. Um, when you were at the talent agency, like, w- did it ever cross your mind that like, your younger brother like, had this like, talent and you, you eventually would so- sort of help him get his talent and art out there in it, the world? It wasn't at the talent agency. It was, when I, uh, it was a couple years later uh, that when he started going to USC. So when he started going to school, that was when I started working at the Fantasy Factory, which is actually just a few blocks over. Mm-hmm. It's closed now. They don't have it anymore, but that's where it was. Mm-hmm. And um, so because Sandy now lived in L.A., this is the first time in years that we had lived in the same city. So we, we started hanging out all the time and just for fun doing artwork together. I was working with those guys, and I was seeing them make more money and close more deals than you could possibly imagine i mean it was crazy everything they touched was gold and i saw very quickly how things worked at that level and i thought sandy and my you know hobby our fun thing there there's a real business there we when we worked together it was very very good it was very professional and it was i had never seen anything else like it and i thought it was really great and i thought we could sell it so I implemented a lot of the things that I learned from working there into what we started doing together, and it just started going. And Sandy, I'm curious. So while Shelby's doing this kind mm-hmm. of building a career and you had just started USC, what was your mindset going into school? You know, Were you just ready to learn all these things and continue pa- practicing your craft, or were you just like, you know what, I'm just going to enjoy my you know four years here and then – I'll figure something out. When did we start it? Like sophomore or junior year? Yeah. Maybe. So maybe like in the beginning, Shelby and I, Shelby was painting as a hobby and I was going to school for painting. And like I did it, you know, for 
for assignments or something. But pretty quickly, like Shelby and I were like, let's do this professionally. Let's really focus on this. Yeah. So like at school, I was going to school, but then I was more focused on like sh- what Shelby and I had going He'd on. He'd finish class and then come over. Yeah. yeah. I, had, I had moved into like a, a bungalow in Santa Monica and the bungalow at Santa Monica or a it was a bungalow because it was like a one bedroom kind yeah. of like standalone right, yeah. it was awesome it was like a mini house yeah. and the it's reason like, I got it is because it had a detached garage room. in the yeah. back mm. and so that was our first studio it was tiny yeah. and stuffy and there was no wifi and we'd have to go, in <laughs> go inside port. we'd have to, to go inside to Shelby's stuff. place to answer emails, to like save photos and then go back out to the little garage. Yeah, if Sandy know. was going to work on his computer, we'd have to go inside, upload them like inside the yeah. house and then go back outside to work on it. Oh my God. And I also should say that I worked, I, I always painted all through college and all through working jobs. I, as a hobby, I'd paint almost every day when I'd come home from work. Did you know, any like formal training in painting? Or you no, just, no, no, you no. Just kinda, I just, whatever I, you I liked it. And I liked building the canvases. Yep. And, you know, making everything, it was all part of the process and I yeah. loved it. And Sandy, as like someone who like, essentially it sounds like you had like this like natural gift for art and you were always interested in it. Like, was it difficult taking like a class in art that was a little bit more structured or did you, did you actually really enjoy those classes? Uh, I wouldn't say difficult, but uh, like, you know, my mind would wander. Yeah. Like, you, you were good at it. No, I like it, but. I liked it, yeah, but it was like, I was just so excited to come work with you, you you know what I mean? Like, even some assignments, there was studio time where we could work in the classroom, but I would just grab the painting, and we, I would go to Santa Monica with Shelby and work He's on He's not it giving you enough. I'm going to brag about right, Sandy. But before, and before <laughs> you do it, what, give us a little detail as to what really, like, what you guys were doing. Like, was there a business there, like, and what was that business? Not yet. Got it. We were okay. just exploring, painting okay. together. So just painting together. Yeah, That's we'd it. come up with, we'd just talk about stuff that we liked. Come Give up me an with example. The, well, even, like, like practicing the line work or, like, how we would want to, you know, add a shadow in a painting. We did, or, like, a skeleton on a telephone one time with an elephant. It was just for fun. A skeleton? Remember the... Paul and Bradley. Yeah. It, it, we just would th- think of <laughs> That's things. That's really all. I know. I was trying to go back as far yeah, as Yeah, like, I, could. I don't know, like, show me, like, I like skeletons. And I'd be like, yeah, yeah I like skeletons I too. Tell by this skeleton. On yeah. The, and so we'd be like, let's paint a skeleton. Yeah. So we'd paint it. And then we're like, all right, let's try that again. But, like, what if we, you know, tried a different technique? Mm-hmm. And right. Yeah, we're just, it, we're just having fun <laughs> just exploring it. Okay, and back to bragging about Sandy. Yeah, yeah go for it. <laughs> so what he didn't say, because I guess you're not supposed to say it about yourself. No, you could, we, could, we like braggers here. I loved yeah. when Sandy yeah. would come home from class and give me the updates about the projects he was working on, the professors, kids in his class, how they would you know, talk about the different projects that they'd work on. So anyway, one of the classes, one of his high, like upper level art classes, mm-hmm. Sandy had, uh, I think it was right after the first projects, maybe after like the first couple weeks of school, he turned it in. Sandy was far and away the best in every single class. Every class he, he had, he was... Like objectively or subjectively? Outstandingly the best <laughs> in every way. Creatively, yeah. uh, I mean, just the way just that he thought about things, everything. how he actually created yeah. the artwork. Whatever it was, he was the best. So one of these classes, these upper level art classes, after he turned in the first project, the next class, the professor said... Every project that we do from here on out, you're going to have a partner to do it with. And everybody in the class has to do at least one project with Sandy. I forgot about that. I didn't. That was amazing. (laughs) Thanks, Shelby. Wow, that's crazy. Um, I just, I don't know. I really liked it. He's the best. But like, why do you think he's he's so good at it? Because it's natural. It flows. It's, there's... The well of ideas is never ending. Yeah. And Sandy has, uh, we, it's like, the reason we work so well together is it's almost like, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. It's almost like we're in a dream and we share the same dream. Like, you know, in a dream, you can make anything happen. Yeah. We 
we, mm. we have the same thoughts. Like when we go back and forth on ideas, yeah. I, we don't have to explain You're on the same page to each yeah. other. It's just understood. Right. Yeah. Like if I'm like, I want to do a golf painting and I want like this in the foreground, that in the background, like Shelby's envisioning it the same that I'm envisioning exactly. it. Exactly. Why do you, I mean, I, I know you guys are brothers, but like, what, what do you think? Is there like a science to that? Like what, what is the reasoning behind that? Things are meant to be. I don't know. I, yeah, we're also like tight brothers. Like yeah. uh, growing up, we, we have the same lot, interests. Yeah, we did a lot together and re- like everything together. And so, we think the same things are cool. Yeah. And, and like what was the dynamic like with your other two brothers? Like were they also like artsy and into like or was it mo- mostly like you guys? No, they, they are but they're admirers of the more so. Like I don't think either of them would like necessarily paint something but like yeah. the young our younger brother Jody is like very into fashion. Yeah. He likes uh, all the Corey likes brands. fashion too. He's, yeah. he's super with it. Um. But they're not going to, like, swing a hammer or right. pick up a pencil and draw something. So I'm curious. So you obviously are excelling at school and obviously, as Shelby said, the best of the best. But you're, like, also more focused on working with Shelby and doing the stuff at the studio. Yeah. At what point do you guys realize, if at all, we got something here, maybe we can even make money off of this? Sandy and I have been working together for maybe over a year and we were getting really good. Yeah. I think that the work was getting really good and we kind of knew that we were going to be able to sell something. I don't think we had sold anything yet. Right. And uh, one day uh, the boss I had was, he was being a little bit of a jerk mm. and he came in and he was, he was like on a hot one. I know and, the feeling every day. And he, <laughs> he like threw me his car keys and he said, fill up my gas tank and get me a salad. Fuck no. Uh, it was... <laughs> no, I mean, that's Shelby's job, but... It was rude. Yeah. It was not the way that yeah. it needed to go down, but it did. Yeah. And he wasn't mad at me. He's just, you know, I'm, I was the easy target, but I took the keys, I filled the tank, <laughs> and I was getting the salad and <clears throat> I was parked in this underground parking lot and as I backed up, I... <laughs> Slammed his car accidentally right into a pole. It was an accident, total yeah, accident. Yeah, yeah. But I cracked the. You're not gonna crash a car on purpose. <laughs> I uh, I cracked the. I mean, I wouldn't want you to admit it, regardless. <laughs> whatever the tail light and bent the fucking thing. It was sucked. And the whole plan was like, I was gonna like save up some money so that Sandy and I had like oh, a little bit of a saving so that when we started this business, yeah. we we're gonna be good to go. I I hit the pole and I I decided in that moment I'm gonna quit right now. Mm-hmm. That's it. That was it. Yeah. So I, I went back to the office and I said, I, gotta, I got two things I got to tell you. One, I backed your car into a pole and I'm really sorry and I'll pay to have it fixed. And he, you know, he was so, it, it changed everything. He was yeah. like, dude, are you okay? Like, that's why we have insurance. Don't worry. It'll be fine. Still had to pay the deductible, a thousand bucks. <laughs> and I said, the second thing is I quit. And I was like, I had worked for him for a long time. And I said, I'm not going to like walk out the door today. Yeah. You know, we'll find somebody, yeah, I'll train yeah. them, but I'm letting you know. And he stood up and he gave me a big hug and he was like, you're going to do the art thing. And I was like, I'm going to do it. And he's like, yes. And so that was kind of a pivotal, pivotal mm-hmm. moment. Mm-hmm. I called Sandy on the drive home and I was like, I quit. We're going full into this thing. And maybe a month later or three weeks later that I was done working and it was just every day painting in the studio, making things. Um, Instagram had was really brand new and it just so started. Is this out. like what 20? No, well, he graduated 2014, so I'm gonna say 2014, 2015. Yeah, this would be like 2014, 2013, 2013, maybe. Yeah, 2014 or 2013, right around there. Yeah, yeah. And, and so you're doing this like full time. Like, what was the vision at the time? Was it we're gonna just try to be. Yeah, there's no Not like set that. vision. Dude, we no didn't have plan. like a business plan. Like we didn't like write out goals or anything like that. Yeah. We just said we have such a passion for this. And if we keep like doing this and if we keep, you know, as Shelby said, Instagram was getting popular. Yeah. If we keep posting this, I guess more and more people will just keep looking at it. And, yeah. and I don't, there was no set plan. We but just what knew. did like, what did like success look to you back then? And has it changed since then? Mm. I knew that I had. Working at the factory, I had met a lot of famous people. And I saw how 
fame and celebrity could be harnessed and used very positively to blow something else up. And so I thought that we could implement that into our artwork. And if celebrities bought our paintings, it would help elevate our status and get us to mm -hmm. where we want to a place we wanted to be quicker than any other route. And I was right. <laughs> yeah. So were you guys like, at some point, did you guys start focusing? Like when you had that kind of thought, did you start focusing on like, we got to create? It happened naturally. And so, it's never been like one focus, like this is the only thing we're going to focus on. Mm -hmm. it, we've always had like 10 things. You okay? <laughs> this is Billy. Billy just got here. What's up, Billy? Uh, we've always had like 10 things that, I don't know, infinite things, but like 10 things that we're focusing on, like paintings or posting or posting meetings or responding to emails or... Building the website. Building the website. Yeah, always uh, doing taxes. a little bit of here and then moving on to the next thing so you don't yeah. get burnt out on one thing. But so you guys like wanted to get these paintings in front of celebrities. Like, what, I just what knew that, that I, it wasn't that we wanted to. I just knew that that route would be more efficient yeah. than, let's say, it's like anything in life, I would say. Like, you, life is hard enough as it is, right? It's tough. There's a lot of things pulling you in different directions. So if you can, Go with the flow, right? If there's a river and it's going in one direction, why paddle in the opposite direction? Go with it. So I didn't necessarily have, we didn't necessarily have uh, gallery uh, contacts or our parents aren't, you know, famous artists or musicians or something that could plug us straight in. What, what I like had- You're not in the scene automatically. No, what I had was a lot of friends that- from the Fantasy Factory and friends of friends that were famous. So Drama wanted a painting, for example. I sold him a painting. He posted it on Instagram and it exploded. We got a ton of new followers, a ton of new inquiries, right. sold a lot of paintings. Uh, and, you know, like, and it, it just kept going like that. Another guy would, you know, like Sean Kingston mm. or Kid Inc., you know, like these like, musicians yeah. and um, movie stars, you know, Bradley Cooper. And they right. just, people just I kept, mean, the domino effect, obviously, at that it, point. It just happens, kept coming yeah. in. And but we, I'm curious. I mean, like, obviously, we you wanted, harnessed that and used that, you know, but that's publicized a, it. To play devil's advocate, like, everybody wants that celebrity influencer marketing, right? Like, I mean, that's the ideal. But was there a backup plan? Like, did you have, or, or were you super confident that this was going to work? Like, it was guaranteed to work. That was just the path that just was happening. It was Like, if obvious. Shelby and I just, you know, did paintings and had shows and, like, it wasn't so, like, if Instagram was never invented or something, we would have just found a different path and just... Yeah. No matter what the route, this, is what, this was meant to be. And yeah. So whatever, if Instagram never was invented and we didn't have any celebrity connection, we would have plugged into whatever that thing was to take us to where we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And I know you guys are like kind of just doing whatever you feel like doing at the time as, as far as like your paintings go and your art goes. But along the way, did you guys get any feedback, especially early on from the folks who were like interested in purchasing your art about why they were purchasing it? Besides no. the mere fact no. that they liked it? I think that it was always not a concern. Sandy and I have to still, we, we listen to yeah. everything. Yeah. But what it really comes down to is what do Sandy and I like or how do we feel about it? Mm -hmm. We talk about everything and the, any decision that's made is made by us first mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. So we never are opposing on anything. Yeah. I was I was going more so curious. Like I know you guys have like um I guess tell us about what what you would consider like your style or um aesthetic to be because it's a lot of nostalgic art. Which I, okay, again, as a kid growing up in the '90s, it's like really cool to see. But I guess in your words, like how would you guys describe it? Maybe starting with you, Sandy. Uh, you're right with nostalgic. I mean, the biggest thing Shelby and I have in common is like our is our upbringing, and it's the most thing that we have in common is like watching the same TV shows or listening to the same music or, you know, having all the same interests. 
So that's like where the nostalgia stems stems from. But as far as like our style, uh, I would just say modern, contemporary. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shelby and I like to use like you know tactile tools, pen, uh, paintbrushes, paints. But we always try and make the end goal of our painting to almost look like digital. And that's one style. And then sometimes we even do like, uh, you know, this, like our abstract art kind of where it's more in like the process. Like we'll, we'll, uh, if we put paint in a balloon and then in like an interesting way, pop the balloon mm-hmm. and explore it at like, you know, gravity and paint and filming it and everything. So we we like just trying different things. Sandy, I'm curious, who are you inspired by or, or growing up even? Like, who are you inspired by in terms of not only artists, but also just the people around you that kind of feeds into the work that you put out? You want to know who my favorite artist in the whole world is? Is it going to be Shelby? It's Shelby. How'd you know? Because you guys are in love with each other. It's <laughs> yeah. fantastic. Sandy's my favorite artist <laughs> yeah, in the yeah, entire yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Without question. Yeah. Uh, I never like looked up. I mean, you know, like I loved SpongeBob, so I would yeah. look up to that show. Yeah, I liked that there was like these characters, and you knew what each character was. You knew just by the color, like yellow. You know that SpongeBob or pink. It's Patrick. That was always fascinating to me. Uh, you, know, show- you got to take things. Sandy and I both never had like, you know, Mickey Mantle is my hero. Who's it that? was he's a baseball player. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome that you said he's that Mickey like Mantle. It. Yeah, I just he's like a legend. Yeah, oh, I'm yeah. not into baseball, but I know him. Right. Mickey so <laughs> what like, team did he play for? So anyway, like <laughs> so you don't even know, um, <laughs> dude. I didn't. I didn't give you a hard time. Might have been the Phillies. Uh, well, so I mean, anyway, like fact Sandy Sandy Koufax. He's a Dodger. So like. <laughs> Our dad, he's, he's our hero, right? That's, my dad's my hero. But, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like I wanted to be an insurance salesman, you know? I did like that he owned his own business. That's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, he's his own boss. I like that he's the most honest man alive, mm-hmm. you know? And he's very confident. I like, I like Steve Jobs, how he made, he cared about the inside of stuff as well as the outside, you right. know? I, that's Sandy and I take a lot of pride in, like, I think he has his like signature or something or something engraved in like I don't know what, but it's inside. it's awesome. Yeah. Like if you took something apart, which I know you're not supposed to, it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Shelby loves taking things apart. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he likes little. putting it together. Um we li- I like Phil Collins. Yeah. Phil Collins is a beautiful musician beautiful and musician. I like how he uh, the whole Tarzan the whole Tarzan, soundtrack. Tarzan the entire Tarzan soundtrack. What about Genesis? Killer. But how about like but like I'm gonna Wait. use him as an example because of uh, like I like that he could do an entire album for Disney mm-hmm. and do an entire orchestra show not affiliated at all, and he's respected in both worlds. Sandy and I emulate yeah, that cross, very much. We like platform. we like that we can work with a with a big corporation, mm-hmm. and we like that we're also respected as fine artists standalone. I also fact checked that Mickey Mantle played his entire career with the New York Yankees, so mm. I was incorrect. Um, Embarrassing we grew up us, an- yeah. Angels fans. Oh, the, yeah, because you guys are from Orange County. Sure. Um, we are now the Los Angeles Angels. I mean, of Anaheim. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how that fucking is, stupid is that? Yeah, I always Anyways, laugh. Stupid Los Angeles. Angeles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes no sense. What Did, were you saying? No, no, no. Yeah, Los Angeles Angels of California. <laughs> of, the California yeah. Angels, yeah. <laughs> When you guys were starting off, did you ever think that it would come to this? Like, did you ever envision this? Like, and that's what I'm curious about because a lot of founders and creators and dreamers and visionaries, they kind of have this like image of what can be, right? Even if it never comes to life, they start off having this grand vision of things. Did either of you have that grand vision? And if you did, did you did you share that with one another? Like, hey, like you know, I feel like in five to ten years, like this is gonna be where we are, and let's work backwards. And let's start somewhere and let's do it. Or was it just, let's do whatever the fuck we want and see where we end up? I think we're still on our way to mm-hmm. what we have spoken about. Is that possible? Is, is it, can you share that or no? I mean, we're, I mean, we're doing it. So it's this on a higher level. 
we want to get into lots of things too. Yeah. Like we like furniture. Like th- we're on, this is the coffee table that Sandy and I built. Yeah, it's sick. And it's just, this was scraps. This is just yeah. extra pieces around the studio. Mm-hmm. We had an idea and we put it together and it's really cool. Mm-hmm. I'll show you later. Like we have, we did some chairs over here. Mm-hmm. We made some pillows, you know, so we're, we're into sewing and embroidery. We've got a sewing machine set up here. We also, we like Sandy's, like, obviously, he's killer at animation. Mm-hmm. He's been exploring some, that more. A lot. There's so many more yeah. things we want to explore. It's like, and even paintings. Like, we still have so many paintings that we want to make or different kinds, different styles. Real estate, too. Like, we want to own buildings. Yeah. I love it. I want to own, I don't, you know, like, Sandy and I talk about the studio. Like, this is a great studio. We've been here for several years, and we don't plan on leaving anytime soon. But when we do leave, I hope that it's because we're ready to buy a building. One thing that Pat and I were talking about on the way here and what we were curious about, because so most recently we interviewed Jeff Cole, who I'm sure you guys have heard of or know. Or, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, we were talking a lot about licensing and how that works within, within their business. Um, is that something that you guys have done or is that something that you guys are working on to work with different brands or companies or whatever it may be mm-hmm. to recreate um, or reimagine, you know, certain characters or certain sports figures or whatever it may be. Yeah, we be like that in your art. Definitely, uh, you know, we like to keep everything that we do like. Uh, how'd you say it? Not like, not mass produced yet. You know, everything limited, everything so that it stays under our control, so we can like, mm-hmm. you know, like hand touch everything. Yeah, hand touch. Make sure everything. Like, we wouldn't just let anybody slap our name on anything. We would want to be involved in everything. Uh, but no, we like, I, I heard someone else say this. It used to be like punk rock cool to not do brand, to not work with brands. Be on the brands. radio. Yeah, to not be Don't on the play radio. Stuff on the radio, but, man. But this is a podcast. Also, right? like, like, I don't want to work with brands. Like, we're punk rock. We're, you know, but then now. It's cool to have a big brand deal. It's cool to be on commercials. It's cool. I think Lil Yachty said it. <laughs> I think they, they asked about like his Target or his Sprite side. deal. Yeah. And he's like, man, rappers would be right. would never do a Target deal. But he's like, of course I'll do a Target deal. And, and I'm, yeah, it's yeah, huge. It's huge and for him, yeah. I, I, I have that kind of mindset that it's like, I wouldn't, I would listen to any deal, corporate anything, but... Would I do it? It just would depend on if it's... Well, to give them the good, reason, like when, when you and I take like a sponsored thing, why is it okay that we do it? Oh, because, well, you say, because uh, uh, you always say because uh, you say. can make anything look good. It's when something doesn't look good or represents you bad, it's like out of laziness. So like, a, like the term sellout, yeah. right? Like you're a sellout. I think that that there's no such thing as that if you're in control of the creative, uh-huh. right? S- sellout is when you are lazy and you're just taking the check and somebody just uses your likeness, let's say, as the thing. Right. And you don't, you don't control how it's going to look. So Sandy and I have no problem, you know, doing a commercial or an advertisement if we're in control of the creative. Right, because in your case, sellout would be the brand telling you exactly what they want exactly. and you're doing it, right? But, like, I imagine things like, let's say, a Coca-Cola can and having Shelby and Sandy artwork on it. I think, I think if anything, it, it's a great way for brands, like big brands, to really connect with local communities or just people in general because I think they started to realize that they're no longer relatable. Like they're trying to play catch up to culture. Mm -hmm. And I think that if anything, you know, folks like you guys that are in that creation scene should be encouraged by that. Like it's an opportunity to use a platform to share your work and not, not sell out, but also have the world see, okay, this is what we're doing. This is what our aesthetic is like. These are the types of brands that we want to work with and like recreate what they look like. Cause you never know what that opportunity will bring. Yeah. And sometimes you just, we don't even just have like the infrastructure for something. And so that right. you get to use them to do something they, you know, we could have done on our own. Mm-hmm. Um, was there, was there ever like a moment, like maybe even early on, or, or I don't know if the moment has even come yet, but where you, where like someone bought your art piece or someone said something or gave you some feedback or something where you're like, wow, like that's big. 
like the I, I don't know let's say the biggest moment so far and what since you guys have been doing art uh i mean we i'll, I'll do another baseball reference we're batting a thousand here yeah we've we, every single painting we've done um the client has been overjoyed mm. we deliver nothing but joy mm -hmm. um and we've get we've gotten really 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 nice handwritten notes and beautiful gifts and thank yous you know phone calls and emails and so for sure you know and like uh kids will reach out like we'll, we'll get like fan mail mm -hmm. and some you know but like most some of, like, of it's like really really sweet like yeah. really beautifully he's, written he's really saying nice. like was there like a no what, specific like yeah. pivotal moment where it, or is there someone that you want to pur purchase your artwork that you're like oh god i wish like they would purchase this or like they would own one, a Shelby and Sandy piece? Not no. really. It's just if they want it, then they want it. Mm -hmm. It's not like we would go out looking for that necessarily. No. Yeah. And like, uh, something my dad, he always tells us, he said like, everything you guys do is amazing and like take a step back every now and then and realize like, because we're so in it. Yeah, you know what I mean? we don't really like, we're, don't, I, I'm not as, Sandy's better than I am about yeah. it, but I don't appreciate I try and take as a, much. I try and take a step back because I'm like concerned about, yeah, you know, getting whatever, getting it done, and then and then the next thing. Yeah, so it's like celebrating uh, mm. the victory is it is very hard. Yeah, and so what's your what's you guys like every day like day to day like like now is there like a I don't know something that you follow like a regimen or um, how do you guys like are, how are you guys always in sync like how do you guys go through that try to get out the door at six. Uh, Pick up Sandy and hit the gym. Uh, Love that. And then try to do every other night. I leave leave the studio. Uh, I try to leave at five, two nights a week, because I got a new baby now at home. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> and then uh, three he's nights awesome. a week we the do baby's like. Baby's so cool. <laughs> he's the best. Yeah. He's so. He's cool. like he doing things, things okay. grabbing things. Yeah. He's dope. Rolling he's got around. like good weight. Like when you <laughs> really? hold him, it's like. A, <laughs> He's like strong. Yeah, strong. Like Chipotle burrito strong. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. very strong. Yeah. Chipotle burritos. But then three nights a week, we try to work like really late. Really, really, really put it in. Like uh, Tuesday night, we worked until like 5 a.m. Napped until like 8. Shelby and I never like to be late on anything. Mm -hmm. I don't think we are. Like, no. We've never been late. Never. The deadlines are not a concern. We will get it done. Yeah. Guaranteed. So if that means staying up all night, drinking too many coffees, we we never want to be late on anything. No problem. And it's so is most of the bulk of like your work now is it mostly like commission pieces? So it's a beautiful variety. Yeah, yeah. commissions, corporate, mm -hmm. corporate passion projects, things that Shelby and I want to do. Is that more, more mostly where the deadlines come in, like the corporate side? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, there's the deadlines are there for. We even set deadlines for ourselves. Of course, yeah. that's that's where I mean maybe I weigh in a little bit better because I. You yeah, know, come from a corporate background. Yeah, <laughs> and I uh, we we've implemented all of this into everything we do. Like the way that we file things is very structured. The the invoicing is very good. We have a management team. You know, uh, Jack Reed, shout out. Uh, yeah, Jack helped us basically plan this entire thing. That's out. yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, he's great. Yeah, he was fantastic and to work with. We're. We're with everything, with though, it was, like, the long play in mind. Like, everything, like, you know, the Excel sheets, as Shelby said, organizing the files. It's all, like, all right, this is how we're going to organize this year, how this is that. It was always the, we might not know all the specifics, but everything that we did was with the long play in mind. Yeah. I'm curious about this. So, I know, Shelby, you've worked for people. Sandy, have you worked for anyone? Uh... Yeah, I worked at a movie job. theater once. Okay. In, a, in, a, in the summer camp. I'm, I'm still it. jealous. Oh, in the summer camp, yeah. I'm still jealous that post-college. But the summer camp, really remember, have. was a tennis summer camp. Yeah, and how long did you work at the movie theater? One week. <laughs> I worked a weekend, and then I was like, that was terrible. The weekend's <laughs> terrible. I, I hope I can get, like, some weekdays or something. I want to do something on the weekend. And then I got my hours, and then they said, you're working the next weekend. 
And uh, then I realized, <laughs> yeah, the weekends are the busiest times to go to a movie theater. So, of course, they're not going to give me like the juicy yeah. Wednesday hours no. when nobody's no. there. Exactly. They put the new guy always on the weekend. So I was just losing every. I was like, I'm not about to lose every week. <laughs> that was it. One weekend and done. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But so I'm curious to as to what you guys will answer for this. But does doing what you're doing right now feel like work? No way. Yes. But no way. Yeah. But okay, expand on that because I'm curious. I'm sure a lot of people that are tuning into our podcast right now are probably working for someone or doing their own thing or whatever it may be. But I want them to kind of see if there's any sort of connection with what you guys feel about what you're doing day in and day out. Dude, I mean, we gotta. I I have to pay three rents. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have to. You I have to pay taxes. I have to call Jack and say, did the, did the wire hit, you know, like, did the invoice go out? Where are we at with Warner brothers? What, you know, what's the deal with the, you know, I mean, it's, I got to go through the emails. Uh, you know, a lot of our clients are overseas. So like, you know, China and Australia, those, you know, those are opposite hours from us. So I'll get emails in the middle of the night and I want to answer them so I can get a response back right away. That's not fun in a traditional sense, right. but I like it. Yeah. It's exciting, you know? Like, I love, like, closing a deal. I yeah, love that. Like it happy, feels happy awesome. happy work. It's happy work. So, like... And we have, like, a good team. We have people that helps, but, yeah, it's, we like to, like... You know, the more you overlook, the less slip-ups there are. The, the best it represents us. No, but when we're painting a painting, that's... That's maybe 25% of what we get to do. Right, and that's why I'm asking is because, you know, when you go on Instagram or when people hear about your work, it's always, they see the end result. Right, yeah. Right? They see the success. They see, you know, the beautiful artwork. But it's curated. It's on purpose. Right. Nobody, that's what you want. You know, mm -hmm. that's what, I mean, we enjoy doing it that way. We don't, you know, people don't necessarily want, I mean, maybe some people do, but the large majority of people want want it to look easy. They want to just see yeah. all the beauty with a ribbon on top. And we're happy to provide that. We make it fun. You know, you don't necessarily want to see us like covered in paint, <laughs> haven't showered in three days. There's shit I might not, but there might be some people from right? listening to our podcast that might want to see that. <laughs> Spilled a bucket of paint on the floor. You know, the dog stepped in it and then walked all over the carpet. And then... This just I, sounds like art. Every tool that'd is That would be kind of cute, though. That would be kind of cute. Prince. Yeah, yeah, yeah that would be I mean, dope. shall we just give an example? That, yeah, it's yeah. 10 grand if anybody wants that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we pride ourselves on... What we show the world. Making is, it look clean and easy and fun. Here it is. It was no problem. Done. Easy. As we always say, like everything on social media, it, it's always so heavy. It's like, a highlight. It's always oh, yeah. dramatic. And it's all, yeah, but like. We want to present a highlight reel. Yeah. And we also just want it to be fun and easy. So that it's like, like we don't want to take a political stand. We don't want to talk about a bad day. It just, we just like to make it. You know, funny. there is a place for that. We're not knocking that at all. No, you know, it's definitely. important. Obviously, we follow news accounts and you know trending celebrity accounts. Like, of course, you know you got to know what's going on in the world. But when you come to our page, we want it to be light, easy, and fun. Yeah. Um, I know you guys always say you guys are just getting started. So what's what's the kind of vision for the next like five to ten years? I like, guess it just continue to make what you want to make and yeah. I, ideally, people are still coming. Explore to you. different mediums. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do more it. of what we're doing. More and different of what we're doing. Hmm. Yeah. We love like we love the furniture stuff. Yeah. yeah. We haven't uh, presented that even yet. We haven't even shown publicly what we've been working on. What we we love it and what what do you hope that kind of turns into as far as the furniture thing like do you, do you want to have your own like do you want to sell it like in yeah. Like, retail yeah stores yes yep. i mean that's a it's just another avenue i mean we're going to it, it, yeah that's the plan you've heard it here first <laughs> we, remember also shelby like he has a film major too like right. and you don't get to explore the film too much but you would love to well be. we do i mean that's what the like when we do like the videos sure, and stuff sure, like the balloon but, popping onto the painting that's not 
it may look like, wow, that, are you kidding me? That's not art. Like mm-hmm. you just popped a balloon and it went on the canvas. It's like, dude, that, that embarrassingly took 20 hours <laughs> Of work. Set up on the cameras. We messed up four times before that, and we were pulling our hair out yeah. before we nailed it. Yeah, we have four cameras on it. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're, it's a lot of work. And yes. time you have to set it up again. Right? Yeah, it's <laughs> crazy. That's why you but, try and go for the first try. And then we edit it, you know, and like make it look just right. Okay, which part are we going to slow mo? Which angle yeah. are we going to cut to? That's all important, but we deliver it. You know, per, you know, really nicely. Mm-hmm. Just it, yeah, but more of everything. Yeah. More of videos, everything. furniture, animation. Videos, furniture, paintings, art shows, home goods, paintings, everything. Amazing. On a more general sense, I know that you know, for me, when I was in college, and I think Pat and I have talked about this, um, I wasn't very much into art um, until more recently. You know. My girlfriend is very into art, uh-huh. and I've probably been to more museums in the last like year and a half than I've been in my entire life combined. Yeah, and it almost seems as though my like our generation of folks are much more into art and culture and things that are related to society and history and documenting that, whether it's through photo or video or just general content. How do you see this space that you guys are currently in evolving, even just beyond what you two are doing, but Folks that I'm sure that you guys know and interact with, where is the art industry, where is the art space headed towards? That's a good question. Uh, People love like, back to like Instagram, people love sharing photos. I'm sure that art got more popular because people like to go to museums and take a photo in front of a painting or you know, and all these like experiential. Well, I'll ask this, did it get more popular or did we just get older? I, I, that's a good question, and it's you know I, I, when you ask that, what I remember is there was a there was a clip of Will Smith. I think it was on the Jimmy Kimmel show, if I'm not mistaken, and he talks about racism, and he said, and he was saying, he was talking about how this got deep real quick, I think, but he was talking about how did racism actually did did, did we see the number of races decreased or. Are people just talking. seeing less of it on it and talking more about it and are more engaged? Yeah. You know? And it's it's almost that you, you, we don't I don't know the answer to that question, you know. Like has it got more popular? I'm not sure. I think has our culture has our generation been more aware because of you know platforms such as Instagram? I think so. And I still think that there's a fo- I think there's still a very big divide, you know, be, between folks that are wealthy and can afford to actually purchase art and impact culture. And then there's the folks that are admirers like Pat and myself, and I'm sure both of you and a lot of the folks that you know, and I think that there's th- that gap is slowly um, narrowing. I think also with like sharing things online, you can more people can be like, "Oh, I could do that." Right. The, I was about the, to say, I'm that, sure technology, the yeah. rise of technology, had so much to do with it. Or, oh, I see this. I'd like to try that myself. I also think that access, you know, just access is easier. People can see sure. things more and. People like, they're drawn to like expensive things, you know, like fancy cars. People have liked cars since the very beginning. Fancy watches, you know, uh, expensive clothing. It's all been popular. Artwork. I think it's been popular forever. I think that, I think maybe more than ever now, uh, pop culture and the people at the top of that food chain are really into fine art. Mm. And so because they're really into it, it trickles down to their fans who have become really into it. Mm. I could see that being and like lots of, uh, an example of it. Crossing over. Like if a rapper raps about an artist or if an artist paints a rapper and, you know, it's like, yeah, it's kind of all, you know, mu- music genres are blending and right. creatives are blending. You have like, Fashion designers who are also DJs. I think it's kind of everything's Virgil. Virgil. <laughs> um, and I think I think Golden Sachs CEO is also a DJ. Funny, funny enough, for the corporate guy. Who his CEO? The CEO of Golden Sachs. Who is, is DJ. the CEO? Of I don't. Golden I forget Sachs. his name. Yeah, we got a pretty good taste. In I know he's he a DJ. Something. <laughs> uh, Spooky just I don't fell. think I'm very um, musical. <laughs> um, one thing I'm curious about is how do you price your art? Uh, we Shelby and I no. price it. To make ourselves comfortable. 
Uh, shall we say we have Renz? Shall we as a baby? That was such a good way to answer it. It was really perfect. And you're right. And I'm like, Sandy is so smart. And you can't. Isn't he? And look at how handsome he is. Thank what a catch. So many good compliments. This, I, this is like you the complimenting them. hour. He deserves yeah. them all. Uh, also, kind of like a, a rule is like you don't really ever want to go backwards. You don't mm. want to like price a painting at something and then, you know, next year make it right. less or something. So we've been very conscious about, like wouldn't just throw out a number, right. just figure it out. It's always right. been like, you know. Calculated. Calculated. Everything's very calculated. Do you guys want to get to the point? I mean, like, are you guys still concerned or were you ever concerned about being accessible to as many people as possible? Or is it more just so if you appreciate our art, this is what it is, this is what you get, and this is how much it costs? Sandy touched on it earlier, and we're not ready for that yet. Uh, ready for what? For it to be accessible for everyone. Like the sure. scale. Sure, yeah, mass. we're still every day, like, we're still developing right. it. But do you want it to be? Yes, 100%. Um, Okay, so that doesn't necessarily mean like for product too. Like it could be accessible where we do, you know, like a show and, right. and uh, people come. It stays open for a month right, or yeah, something. Like and a that becomes like accessible, a, right? Uh, totally. Yeah. But as far as like ownership, mm. because everything we do is either such small quantity on purpose or fully handmade, start to finish, we it's. I mean, it's our time. So there's a, the price dictates that. Yeah. Or other way around, rather. But, for example, something that we, I, I, we talk about that would be really great, and I'd like to do this, is, I'll use the furniture as an example. I like making the furniture. So there'll always be a premium on the furniture that Sandy and I hand make ourselves. But that doesn't mean that down the road, we would do a deal with Target or Ikea or something. And they would take our, you know, what we've made and make it in a mass way. I would be very open to that. Mm -hmm. But I'm also not looking to do that today or tomorrow. That's when I'm more, when we are more confident in that part of it. Awesome, man. Well, you guys, this has been awesome. Uh, just hearing about your story. It's like, you know, you see the art, but to, to know the guys behind it and, mm -hmm. and your whole story has been Awesome. I know Posh plugged his girlfriend earlier, so I got to plug mine too. She absolutely loves the piece you guys did for David Dobrik. Oh, uh, That's yeah. her like favorite piece of you guys. So The black one? To, the black one. Yeah. Cool. Uh, thanks, guys. Thank yeah. you. I shout out to my wife, Vanessa, <laughs> and my Same. baby, Valentine. Oh, yeah. Anyone you want to shout out? Uh, spooky. <laughs> you already said my girl. Shout out, Spooks. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah. Thank you for having thanks, us. Man. Yeah. This Thank is you. a lot of Thank fun. Thank you for coming by. <laughs>